Hey, this is Mr. Mason Day, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to practice solving word problems involving interest. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on simple interest. And the formula that we're going to use to solve for simple interest is interest is equal to principal times rate times time. Whereas a lot of teachers like to say I equals PRT. All right, so let's read the word problem and figure out what value we have to plug into which variable. So the problem reads that Janice has a checking account that pays her simple interest of 2% on the average balance in her checking account. Last year, her average balance was $450. How much interest did she earn in her checking account last year? To figure out how much interest Janice accumulated over a year in her bank is by substituting P with 450, that is the principal amount involved in this problem, and we have to multiply that by the rate, which is 2%, and as a decimal, 2% is written as 0 0.02, and the amount of time that we are seeing how much interest she collects is one year. So for time, we're just going to write the number 1, which represents one year. So to figure out how much interest Janice accumulates over a year, we just have to multiply 450 times 2% or 2 hundredths, and then multiply that answer by 1, which is just going to be whatever the product of these two values are. So let's go off to the side here and multiply 450 by 2 hundredths. Now, 2 times 450 is 900, and we have a 0 here, so we can just ignore that. And we have two numbers after this decimal point, and the same has to be true in our answer, so our decimal point goes right here. So we have already determined that Janice accumulated $9 of interest in her account over the course of a year. Now, this problem also could have been solved mentally. Let me demonstrate how we can do this. Now, when you think about a percentage, a percentage is out of 100. So we could translate this as Janice collecting interest of $2 for every $100 she has in her account. Well, she has $450 in her account. So that means she has four groups of 100 and she has a half a group of 100. So she has two for this 100, two for that 100, two for her third 100, two for her fourth 100, but she doesn't have a fifth 100. She only has half of a 100, which means she's gonna have half a two, which is one. So in your mind, you could have just said, okay, she has two, four, six, eight, plus one more is $9, which is the amount of interest that she accumulated over the course of a year. Now, another way some people like to solve these problems is by using fractional values. And let me show you how you can do that. So we can write 450 multiplied by 2% written as a fraction or two out of 100. And we have to convert this whole number into a fraction by writing a one underneath. Now, what we can do in this situation is a couple of things. We can just multiply straight across on the top if we want to to start. That would give us 900 over 100. And then we can just cancel out the zeros here, which would just give us 9 over 1, which is equal to 9. Now, another way we can do this is we can get rid of 1 zero here, 1 zero here. We can reduce 2 over 10 to one-fifth, and then we can just take 45 and divide that by 5, which is also 9. So there are a lot of ways that we could have solved this problem. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. This problem reads that Reggie borrowed $8,000 for two months to finance some renovations to his barber shop. The interest rate he was charged was 18% per year. How much interest did he have to pay for borrowing the money for two months? All right, so first let's go ahead and 
state our formula, I equals PRT or principal times rate times time. All right, next we're going to plug in the amount of principal given, which is $8,000. Next, we're going to multiply the principal times a rate of 0.18. And we are going to multiply that by the amount of time. Now, this problem can create some problems for a lot of people. Because the amount of time is two months, a lot of people would be inclined just to write a number two here. But notice the interest rate given is per year. So we have to state the amount of time in terms of years. So how can we write two months in terms of years. Well, we know that a full year has 12 months, so the amount of time that they are borrowing this amount of money is two out of 12 months. Now notice in this problem, I have a whole number, a decimal, and a fraction, which would not be difficult if you had a calculator. But let's say you have to do this on paper. For me, I think the easiest thing to do in this situation is state all three of these values as fractions. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to write I for interest equals 8,000 over one times 18 over 100 times, and 2 twelfths is something that can be reduced. So we can just do that straight away. That would be one sixth of a year, which is the same thing as two twelfths. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if there's any opportunity for cross cancellation. 8,000 ends in two zeros. It actually ends in three, but I'm going to cancel out two zeros here and two zeros here because when using cancellation, you can only cross out an equal amount of zeros. All right, now I have an 18 up top here and a six below here. If I were to divide 18 by six, that would be three. So I can reduce 18 over six to three over one. Now notice at the bottom, I have all ones. And when you have all ones, then you're done doing any sort of simplification within the problem or cross cancellation. So we can just write a number one at the bottom because one times one times one is one. And at the top we have 80 times three, which is 240. I just ignored that zero for a moment and did three times eight, which is 24. And then I just added the zero back on the end of that. And 80 times three times one would be 240. So 240 over one can be simply stated as $240, which is the amount of interest that Reggie has to pay back for that two month loan. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. This problem reads that Susan had to borrow $12,000 for a home construction loan for three months. The interest rate was 16% per year. How much interest did she have to pay for borrowing the money for three months? All right, so once again, we're gonna state a formula. I equals principal times rate times time. And the principal in this problem it's $12,000, so let's write 12,000 times a rate of 16%, which is 0.16 times three months out of 12, because remember this interest is given in terms of per year. So to express three months as a year, we would say three out of 12, which is the same thing as one fourth if we were to simplify. So we could keep this as 3 twelfths for now and reduce later. We could write it as 1 fourth right away. Or most people know that 1 fourth or 1 quarter is the same thing as 0.25. So if you wanted to do this as all decimals, then you can write 0.25. As related to simple interest, if the interest rate is per year and they give you three months, three months is always going to be a quarter of a year. So you could automatically write 0.25. If you had six months, that would be half of a year. You could write 0.50 here. Nine months would be three quarters of a year. You could write 0.75 here. So those are some basics that you should remember 
Now, at this point, it would be really easy to punch these three values into a calculator, hit enter, and you're finished. You have the amount of interest that Susan would have to pay back on that loan. Now, let's say you cannot use a calculator or your teacher just does not allow that. Then what you would have to do is multiply all these out by hand with paper. But there are different ways that you can approach this multiplication that may make it more efficient for you. For example, you do not have to multiply from left to right. For me, I would like to start by taking 12,000 and multiplying it by 0.25. Because 0.25 is the same thing as 1 fourth or 1 quarter, we should understand that is the same thing as dividing something by 4. So what I'm going to do is mentally just take 12,000 and divide it by 4, which would give us 3,000. In other words, 12,000 times 0.25 is 3,000. And now what we're going to do is take 3,000 and multiply that by 0.16. So we really don't have that much work to do. Now, this is also something that I can semi-do mentally. So 3,000 ends in 3 zeros. So what we can do is we can just write three zeros here on the end. And then we can take 3 and multiply that by 16. I'm going to ignore that decimal just for a moment. And 3 times 16 is 48. Now, this value does have a decimal in it. And after that decimal, we have two place values after it which means the same thing must be true for our answer, which means our decimal point has to go in this position. So the amount of interest that Susan is going to have to pay in addition to the amount that she borrowed is $480. And we should understand that this is just the interest on top of the principal. She's actually going to have to pay a total of $12,480 back to the bank. Now, for those of you who like to solve using fractions, let's just go ahead and solve this using fractions. So 12,000 would be written as 12,000 over 1, 16% is written as 16 over 100, and 0.25 is written as 1 fourth. So three months is 1 fourth of a year. All right. So what we can do right off the bat is we can cross off two zeros here. We can cross off two zeros here. I'm just going to go ahead and erase two zeros. And then we can take 16 over 4 and reduce that to 4 over 1. Now that we have all 1s for our denominator, we can go ahead and multiply straight across. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And for the numerator, we have 120 times 4, which is 480. And 480 times 1 is 480. And 480 over 1 is equal to, of course, $480. I want to say thanks for checking out this math video. Please don't forget to smash that subscribe button and follow me at the social media links listed on the screen. Until next time, this is Mr. Masonette for Masonette Math.